Ciao, sono Andrea Salvioli. Hello, I'm Andrea Salvioli, product specialist at DB Technologies. In today's video, I'll explain the main antenna models used in wireless applications. First off, antennas may be divided into two categories depending on reception. There are omnidirectional antennas and directional antennas. In turn, omnidirectional antennas can be further broken down into monopole, dipole, and collinear antennas. These types of antennas receive the signal in a uniform way from all directions on the horizontal plane. The size is usually small, and they are set at one quarter of the signal wavelength they are supposed to receive. Directional antennas can be further divided into log periodic, or fin, antennas and elliptical antennas. Their reception capacity is mainly focused in the frontal direction and, consequently, they reduce the intensity of other signals coming from other directions. In light of these specifications, you may appreciate that selecting a suitable antenna based on the current situation and the type of setup you seek is paramount. Let us have a look at a few application examples. For a stage where transmitters are fixed or their movements are very limited, the best solution is directional antennas pointing towards the stage. In turn, if the microphones require a remarkable amount of movement, the best solution is omnidirectional antennas in that these types ensure a uniform coverage of the entire area where the show is being staged. Antennas may be also divided into passive and active antennas. Both can have different shapes and sizes, depending on the operating frequency for which they have been designed. Moreover, active models are characterized by an amplifier system mounted on board of the antenna. A passive antenna can be turned into an active antenna by adding an amplifier in series to the cable. This additional circuit amplifies the signal received by the antenna, the gain is usually variable, and sends it to the receiver, thus offsetting the loss caused by the cable. Active antennas need a power cable or batteries to be installed on the antenna, or phantom power generated by the receiver or the antenna splitter. Not all types of receivers provide phantom power. Only some models do so, as opposed to antenna splitters, which are designed specifically for this purpose. In the previous point, I spoke about gain. Let us understand what it is and the criteria needed to manage it properly. According to its shape, every antenna can best receive different types of signals. This ability is called gain, or efficiency. For active antennas, those fitted with an amplifier, the antenna gain adds up to the amplifier gain, which further increases the intensity of the signal received and sent on as an input to the receiver. What is the correct inbound signal level for the receiver? As sound engineering goes, too much pre-amplified signal may be a problem. Consistently, a similar problem may occur as the radio signal goes into the receiver. The correct signal level, then, must be suitable to the setup you are after. It must be neither too low or it may not be received, nor too high or it will saturate the receiver. Another important element that should be considered is the type of cable. Every cable has different characteristics and loses some signal as it carries it. This loss varies depending on the length of the cable. The longer the cable, the higher the attenuation. In order to offset the loss, Adding an amplifier to the antenna or using an active antenna which already contains an amplifier can help. It is important for the cables connecting the antenna to the receiver to always be of the same length in order to avoid malfunctioning due to different inbound signal levels. Let us analyze some of the problems caused by the way antennas are positioned during the installation phase. Our first factor that may cause problems is the presence of metal elements close to the antennas as they may hinder reception. In this type of installation, there are monopole passive antennas connected directly to the receiver located into a rack. This is the signal level. By moving the antennas out of the closet, the level increases. If the antennas are moved farther away, using microphone stands for instance, further signal level improvement may be observed. Another key factor is how high the position of the antennas are. As a matter of fact, antennas must be positioned as high as possible and in sight of the transmitter, avoiding such obstacles as walls, metal objects, or even the crowd. 
Let us have a look at the difference in the radio signal level received in two cases. With an antenna positioned at one half meter from the ground behind the audience, the same antenna positioned at two meters above the audience. If the system being used does not feature any removable antennas, then the receiver must be positioned as high as possible. In this chapter of our video series focused on wireless systems, we have seen what the different antenna types are and how to best use them depending on the needs. Goodbye and see you in the next video. Ciao.